Hi, we're now going to talk about professional bodies and talk a little bit about industry certification as well. So professional body is a organisation which is set up to support the development of people working in that particular industry area. So different industries, really, really varied. Each will have, in many cases, a professional body or several professional bodies. In IT, in the UK, there's quite a big example of a, a, a nationwide professional body called BCS. BCS stands for the British Computer Society, also called the Chartered Institute for IT. So people working in the IT industry can join. It's not mandatory, but they can join the BCS. And that organisation is meant to support those working in IT. And if you're working in particular areas of IT, there may well be other professional bodies as well. So the purpose, as I say, is to support the development. That means they're there to help you get better at your job, there to help you get better jobs and generally try and increase the standard of this particular industry. So they'll usually provide some training, it may be free, it might be paid. They'll usually give you updates on relevant news, reports and research. So they might give you a a quarterly magazine on latest information. They might do some research and publish it on the state of IT in the country, for example. But also, one thing which can be really valuable is they can provide networking opportunities. So networking, we've looked at loads in terms of computer networking, but this is human networking. So you'll find that as you go into employment, a lot of jobs and a lot of connections come from meeting people at certain events. So you go to a conference and you meet somebody, five years later you might work for that person because you had that connection. And so the idea that these bodies have got thousands if not millions in some cases of members, you were able to meet them and discuss stuff. And the whole idea is people working in the same industry are able to collaborate and share information. So there'll be certain events put on by bodies like the BCS to allow you to chat to other people and do Q and A's and things like that. Now, this is not, you know, this is not a a free lunch. There's There's no such thing. You have got to pay for it in many cases. You might get a free subscription at university, that's what I did, Um, and your employer might pay for you to have a subscription. The basic one is, in this case, £150. Some might be more expensive. As you get more senior, you tend to pay more. But what you'll you'll see sometimes is people have letters after their name. If somebody has MBCS after their name, that means they are a member of a British computer society. So it's a way of signalling you're part of a professional body. And it's generally seen as a positive thing. Just one thing to be careful about is the difference between a professional body and a union. So BCS is not a union. As you might know, unions will do things like go on strike to try and get better pay or better working conditions. Professional bodies will try and get better pay and better working conditions, but they won't go on strike. Okay, so they are much more about sharing information than being very forthright like a union might be. Okay, so don't get them too confused, although they are similar. Now, one other thing to say is that training often leads to what we call industry certification. So this is where you do some training in a very specific area that leads to a qualification at the end. So these are not degrees, they're not A-levels, they're not CTECs. They are very specific qualifications, some of which are very small, like some you can do in a day, some you can do in an afternoon whereas some are much longer. But the point is, you do these little qualifications to demonstrate knowledge of a particular technical area. You might do some certifications just to show you can do it. Other ones, you might not know at all, and so you wanna go and do the training to learn, and at the end, it shows you understand that particular area. So if you wanna become a network manager, you might do a certification in networking, and so it shows you've got that knowledge. And of course, That leads to more confidence in your ability. If your employer, if a client thinks you are good at networking, for example, that's gonna improve your job opportunities. If they know you're qualified, that'll make you seem a lot better, of course. And for you personally, if you are stronger after doing the training, of course, that's good for your own confidence and your own working ability. Some people get an apprenticeship or get a degree and never really try and continue their development. And of course, that's not a good thing at all. Now, again, this is not all perfect, right? Of course, 
you're paying for it usually. There might be some entry requirements too. So you might have to be have worked for a certain amount of time or have done some foundation courses before doing harder courses. There is often quite a lot of structure to it. But in many cases, your employers will pay for you to do these, give you time off work and those sort of things because they really see the benefit of you having that certification to demonstrate your knowledge. Cisco is a big networking, actual computer networking company, and so they are quite well known for offering certifications, but so will professional bodies like the BCS.